Hi, welcome to week three. This week we've covered a lot of the cranial nerves in relationship to the eyes, and we've covered the lymph nodes in the neck region, so the cervical lymph nodes, and the head as well. So this week, your checkoffs, you will be doing cranial nerve two, so there's a smell and eye chart, a smell and eye chart card, then also cranial nerves three, four, and six, the six cardinal fields of gaze. So this week there's no wild card, instead the wild card is going to stand for cranial nerves three, four, and six, the six cardinal fields of gaze. Additionally, there is a card for Perla. So Perla is another uh, return demonstration for this week on the checkoff, and then the lymph nodes. So these are our options for the checkoff for this week. For the smell and eye chart, you will need an opaque occluder, and you will use the smell and eye chart that's on the wall. You will want to have your patient stand 20 feet away because the patient never moves, and they will cover one eye and tell them to read the lowest line that they can read accurately. And so say if that's line seven, F-E-L-O-P-Z-D. Then you would have them switch, do the other eye, and do the same thing. Then you would use the numbers on the left-hand side of that line to determine what their vision is, if it's 2020, 2018, or whatever it might be. And we'll talk about what those numbers mean a little bit more in class. You would also ask your patient which color line is longer. Don't tell them, are, is the red line or the green line longer, because then you give them a 50-50 shot. So it's, instead, ask which color line is longer to help determine or screen for any color blindness. So that is cranial nerve two, and this week we'll be doing the smell and eye chart for that. And then, if you draw cranial nerves three, four, and six, you will ask your patient, can you please follow my pen light using just your eyes? And when you do that, you are going to draw cat whiskers, so going out, in, out, in, and you're going in six different regions, those six cardinal fields of gaze. And you're watching for the patient to have smooth, coordinated eye movement. If they have smooth, coordinated eye movement with no presence of nystagmus or strabismus, then cranial nerves three, four, and six are intact. Then the next one that you might do is Perla. So for Perla, you will need a pen light. So the first thing that you're gonna to wanna to do is you're gonna to wanna to look at your patient's eyes. So I'm looking at their eyes and I'm looking at their pupils. Their pupils appear to be equal in size and they are round. Lots of times your pen lights will even have a gauge to tell you so you can look at the exact size. So these pupils appear to be about uh, two millimeters in size and they're, like I said, equal and round. Next, I'm gonna see if they are reactive to light. So I'm going to shine a pin light at a 45 degree angle. I can check again if I'd like to. I'm going to go to the other side, shine at a 45 degree angle. And I'm looking to see do they react to light and do they do so consensually. So the pupils react to light consensually. And then finally, for accommodation, I'm going to ask the patient to follow my pen using just their eyes. I'm going to go zoom closer in. And I'm watching for the pupils to constrict and converge as the object gets closer. So if their pupils constrict and converge, then accommodation is noted. So since the pupils are equal in size, round, reactive to light, and accommodation is noted, Perla is intact. Next, I'm gonna check the lymph nodes. So with the cervical lymph nodes, I'm gonna start out with, you wanna use two hands as much as possible except for the submental, and you wanna use a nice massaging gesture, trying to keep contact as much as possible. You don't want to jump location to location because you could accidentally jump right over a lymph node and not realize that you missed something. So you have preauricular, which is in front of the ear. I'm going to go behind the ears if you're putting on a pair of glasses. Behind the ears, postauricular. Then you have occipital, which is underneath the base of the skull. Then you can break contact, go to submental, underneath the tip of the jaw. Submandibular, in between the tip of the jaw and the angle of the jaw. Then at the angle of the jaw, you have jugular digastric, also known as tonsillar. Then you will have the superficial cervical chain. That is going to be on the front of the sternomastoid muscle. Deep cervical chain, which is in the bottom on the sort of the back part of the sternomastoid muscle. And then you're going to go into the posterior triangle on the back of the patient's neck. In the posterior triangle is the posterior cervical chain. Then you will need to ask your patient to roll their shoulders forward. And when they do so, you are going to tuck your fingers into their clavicle and feel for the supraclavicular. So you do that on your patient, feeling for the supraclavicular. In a healthy adult, lymph nodes are typically non-palpable. 
So non-palpable lymph nodes, like that citation, did you feel any tenderness? So no tenderness noted, no lymphadenopathy noted. And that concludes week three. Once you are done with this checkoff, then I encourage you to go back to what we learned in week two with the aid it with doing the general survey, the skin, hair, and nails assessment, and put it all together from your head to chest return demonstration checklist of what you know so far. You'd be surprised with how much you already know. And that's it.